Hello and welcome to this video where I get to interview the wonderful and beautiful Holly Boulay, who I met recently. We um, we met via Facebook, um, just kind of resonated. Um, and Holly invited me to be interviewed on her healing business podcast, which we did only last week, actually. And if you haven't seen it, the link is in the description and the video will be in the end screen. So it was very much Holly interviewing me, but in the course of that interview, so many interesting things came out of Holly's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and I was left thinking, hang on a minute, I want to know so much more about this amazing soul that is, I want to say, rocking it for humanity at this time of the great awakening um so um there's loads of interesting things like the uh zen buddhist meditation i was like i'd love to hear more about that which is clearly one of your motor your motorways to enlightenment and of course studying the vedic scriptures and stuff like that super super relevant um and um and also of course she's now created the um the the Medicine Woman Collective, which is her offerings uh, to the world at this time. So there is so much to dive into. Where where do you want to start, Holly? So mine at all, wherever you want to go. Do we start at the beginning of your journey and how you actually got to where you are now? Yeah. Okay. It, I don't know about you, but I can find it really hard to go. Where did it start? Because it feels like there's incarnation. Yeah. <laughs> And it kind of feels like it it started way before it officially started in terms of my journey. So um, I suppose as a kid growing up, I was always, um, I, I grew up actually and um, went to a Catholic school. So I went to a Catholic primary school, I went to a Catholic middle school. And um, although I didn't necessarily resonate with everything that was said, I, I certainly resonated with, like, I used to quite enjoy going to church. I used to love, like, the the smell of the incense. I used to love, like, the singing that would happen. And um, I was really lucky to have, um, you know, our local priest and um, my teachers. And I had some teachers that were nuns. And actually, what I remember is all of them, really embodied the Christian values. So they were, you know, they were really kind of heart open, loving, kind, and, you know, you really felt held in their presence. So that really stayed with me, although I didn't necessarily uh, resonate with Christianity as a religion. It wasn't something that, you know, it felt right for me. Um, and then I suppose in my teenage years, I began to dabble in things like um, pagan paths. I, I wanted to understand the pagan side of things. That seemed to make more sense to me in terms of, I grew up on the Isle of Wight, which is, um, you know, there was never a lot going on, but we had our beaches and, you know, our, our woods. And so most of my childhood was brought up in nature, really. And that was one of the things I loved about the pagan path was um, this kind of, connection with nature which I really loved and then in my 20s I was focusing on things like my children and my marriage and my career but a lot of that had um, so I worked in human resources for years so um, I love the psychology element I love understanding why we do the things we do and so that was like a you know, a big part of my journey. I trained to be a coach. I, you know, I used to support people as a mental health first aider and all of these things. I, I love understanding why we do the things we do and helping people to move past blocks in terms of like their career where people have got stuck. And um, so I did a lot of coaching around career progression I used to love watching you know people come to me saying oh well I really want to go for this job and I don't think I'm ready and then you know a few months later they've got the position and that used to just I loved that element but then in my well, I was about 30 I had my youngest and after having him after a really you know simple pregnancy simple birth 
um, I started getting aches and pains in my back and I thought, oh, well, I've put something out during the labor. Um, so I was back and forth to chiropractors and osteopaths and, and then that gradually got worse and worse and to the point that we moved house and the next day my knee just ballooned like wow. double the size. Um, and I was back and forth with the doctors. They didn't know what it was. And um, in the end, I said to them, look, shall I go private? Because it got to the point where it was like a year down the line. We were no closer to figuring anything out. Um, and they just they kept just giving me tablets to like deal with the pain and nothing was really helping or working. The inflammation was everywhere. Um, so I went private and um, I was in the lucky position to have that covered by my work at the time. And uh, we found out it was rheumatoid arthritis and there was no kind of history, no reason why I should have it. And so I kept saying to them, so why, why? <laughs> I'm a why person, right? <laughs> Even as a kid, I was a why person. So I was like, so why? And they couldn't really help. Um, but I went to a rheumatologist. We've got a really good rheumatology department on the island. And, and I remember saying to my consultant, look, I don't want to be on tablets for the rest of my life. It's it, like I'd gone from being someone who didn't want to take paracetamol <laughs> <laughs> to like being on chemotherapy drugs basically to manage this because I was going up and down the stairs and my bum I couldn't lift my newborn son it was it was horrific um and that kind of was the catalyst for the rest of this journey and you know I look back at that time and I'm just enormously grateful but I can remember at the time I didn't feel like that <laughs> <laughs> um and so I started this journey of, well, initially it was, I could see my mental health was going down, like spiraling. I'd lost my sense of identity. I'd gone from being this, who I'd perceived to be a strong, independent woman who was a, you know, she was a mum of three and a career woman at the same time. And I thought I was looking after myself, you know, I was doing the running and I was eating the salads and... And so this was like a big shock to the system and I could just feel my mental health on the decline and um, which was really unusual for me. I, I, I've always been quite a positive person. And so I remember coming down from the chiropractor's office who I was still seeing regularly to try and keep everything in line to try help ease some of the pain I was in. And um, there was a, a thing on the notice board for uh, Zen meditation. And I'd, I'd dabbled, you know, I'd meditated on and off throughout my life, really. I'd, um, you know, I'd listened to visual, like uh, visualizations and guided meditations. And, and I'd done, in my teens, I'd done some kind of, you know, self-led meditations when I was looking at the pagan path and things like that but it hadn't necessarily stuck with me but you know I, I I would listen to guided meditations that was really my only experience of meditation and but I just had this deep sense of this is what I need this is that's it and I remember phoning up the teacher and at the time I didn't have a lot of money because like I'd have been on a lot of sick pay and stuff like that and I remember phoning her up and saying no, I'm sorry, this is really cheeky, but is there any chance I can pay you weekly as opposed to like the lump sum for this course? And so we had a chat and she said, yeah, that's fine. Um, and so that's where I discovered uh, Zen Buddhist meditation. And um, there was that, that really transformed my life. It transformed the way that I viewed myself, viewed my circumstances. Um, it allowed me to find that stillness to access the wisdom within and start to discern between what's my inner voice and what's conditioning. And um, as part of that, I also discovered I had, um, I was quite sensitive to energy. And I had never really um, 
knew that before. I knew there were certain situations where I'd feel uncomfortable. Like I've always hated supermarkets, <laughs> you know, big crowds and things, not my cup of tea. You know, I can do a music festival. I'm happy with the music festival, but um, yeah, there's certain situations where um, energy wise, I've always been quite sensitive. And I look back now and, you know, that was why I was good in human resources. I could pick up on people's energy. I knew where they were at. And my intention was always, how can we get to where we need to get to, but with that person getting the best from the situation. So that ability to pick up on emotion and energy um, has always served me really well. But it also had, you know, shadows to it, as they as those things always do. And so I remember doing this energy meditation as part of the course. And I was sat there feeling completely overwhelmed by what I just experienced. Um, and I remember my teacher was going through around the room asking people, you know, how did you find that? What did you experience? Those sort of questions. And I can remember like I, I was just shocked because a lot of people were like well I don't think I really felt anything or and I'm there feeling nauseous because of the sheer amount of energy we have been working with um and she she came to me and I said I do, I'm not sure I like that and she said what do you mean I said it felt too much in fact I think I need to step outside can I step outside and that's not like me at all <laughs> she was like yeah go step outside um, and I had to, I just felt like I just had to ground and I didn't even probably understand that language at that point, but mm. just like connect to my breath and find that grounded presence again and let everything settle. And, um, I remember she came out afterwards and she said, um, I think you're quite sensitive to energy. I said, and I said, I, like, I didn't even know what that meant. Do you know what I mean? I was like, I don't, what does that mean? <laughs> And so she talked to me about, you know, understanding energy and and she said, I think, I think we need to get you through your Reiki training. She said, because you're gonna find it so, so useful in terms of your day-to-day -day life and being able to, you know, work with your energy as well as where to keep that barrier between yours and other people's. And um, so we did that. And um, my mind was kind of blown. And Reiki still blows my mind, right? I've been practicing it for years and I still find it amazing um, how, you know, everyone has a different experience of Reiki. But for me, I, I, when I'm working with someone, I just know things. So I will know things that I couldn't possibly know. And it still blows my mind. <laughs> I'm like, how do I know that? I don't know, but it, it's true. Um, and then this kind of became a bit of an obsession with energy because I thought, well, if there's energy in people and there's there's energy in my body and there's energy in nature, like, how can I take this further? And at this point, I was still really struggling with my like physical health. And so I thought, well, what practices work with energy on the physical body? And I wanted something truly holistic as opposed to, um, I, I think yoga is holistic in terms of, you know, like when we look at the yoga sutras and things. But what I mean is, you know, I wanted to think about how does energy affect my diet? How does energy affect the way I'm living my life? How does energy affect like supplements and herbs I'm taking in? So I started receiving as as is often the case like um like these little synchronicities and so like I'd pick up a book that I'd had for 10 years and it would mention the word Ayurveda and then a, a magazine subscription that I'd had for years started talking about Ayurveda and um like Facebook ads would start to come up or you know <laughs> like podcasts and mm -hmm. And there was, I can't remember what it was one day. Oh, it was a workshop that came up and I went, okay, I'm listening. I'm going to do this online workshop. And um, after doing it, I was like, I, I need to do the training. I need to do the training. <laughs> As was often the case during that period in my life, I was like, 
I don't have the money, but I need to find the money. <laughs> and lo and behold, I found the money. Um, and so I, I started my Ayurveda training and that, that allowed me to manage my physical body. But it also gave me greater levels of depth and breadth in terms of my spiritual practice how I work with my mind, understanding like the Vedic lens of the psychology I'd been reading about for years from a Western point of view and, and seeing the overlap and, and how like from my humble opinion, I think in the West, sometimes we, we like to think we're far more advanced mm. and I'm reading Ayurveda and I'm like, why do they understand more about my condition from 5,000 years ago than my rheumatologist does now. Um, and so that's certainly been my experience. Like Ayurveda has explained more to me about my condition than Western science could. And because of that, because it looked at everything that was going on in my life, I could then start making some really um, calculated changes around okay so what is the life that is going to serve me serve my body serve my family and still allow me to feel fulfilled and so initially I just became super passionate about helping other people that were in my situation um, because I just knew how debilitating and emotionally draining and mentally frustrating the whole process was and so um, I, I started my business. I was doing Reiki treatments and Ayurvedic um, health coaching. And then that's just kind of grown and grown <laughs> over time, which um, was never like the big dream. You know, there was never a big dream, but now it's it's come to the point of, my question has always been, how can I have the greatest impact, you know, the greatest impact for other people in this situation? And I could see quite early on that there's only one of me. And so I can only do so much. So I started to create my certified training programs so that actually, you know, I can train more people and they can go help as many people as possible. And um, I spend a lot of my time now focusing on, you know, running the certified trainings but also supporting the people that go through the trainings through like business mentorship because that's a whole new healing journey in itself right is you know being comfortable putting yourself out there facing those fears that you have and also getting past those little blocks that we have around you know, it's not good to earn money or it's not spiritual to earn money and and helping them to create um, businesses that allow them to thrive and not struggle. Because I think that's um, a paradigm we can get stuck in, in the healing world that doesn't serve anyone. And um, if anything, just depletes the healer themselves. So wow that was a whistle stop tour of my life <laughs> <laughs> I think it's amazing I think it's amazing um yeah wow because so you love doing the healing business podcast yeah um, and so you're really passionate about talking to other people about their healing businesses um which is interesting because we're talking about paradigm shifts aren't we and when we do the paradigm shifts there's kind of a shift in um the energy of words as well isn't there because mm. um I'm not a big fan of the word business um mm. but it um I, I understand everything that you're saying you know I mean loving money obviously you know love money and it comes it goes it comes it goes you know um yeah. and I think it's meant to right come and go and come and go and um what I'm noticing is the amount of people I know that live in absolute abundance right so they have no problems paying any of their expenses they um are able to pay for everything and anything that they want and need right but they very rarely have a lot in the bank account at any one time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and yeah. and i'm i'm really noticing that because i think that's the new abundance um of the new paradigm because 
Um, I also know a lot of people who don't put themselves out there and don't follow their heart um, and their passion hobbies or whatever it might be because they are fixated on seeing a certain amount in the bank account and they're nice getting metric. they're getting their sense of security and their sense of self-worth their self-esteem their sense of freedom i mean all these things that we want from money they're getting it from that number in the bank account as opposed to inside and i'm noticing with this great awakening that whatever we value outside of us um could become a tower card moment yeah and I, I'm seeing it. A lot of people will lose their most valuable. It could be a person. It could be their finances. It could be their business. It could be their house. It could be, it doesn't matter what. But whatever they hung their self-esteem on outside of themselves, there's a very high chance on their spiritual journey. In order to wake them up, they may lose it. I'm really seeing that. But um, but as for just loving money, I think that's a, a good one. We need to, you know, I love money and money loves me because there is this you know, um, almost there's a stigma about even saying I love money because the people, you know, we're thinking, oh, you're greedy then, you want lots of money. And it's like, well, you know, I want it, I spend it, it doesn't stay long. (laughs) There's always a resource, right? It's an energy. It's an energy, like everything else. It's like water. I need water, water comes in, I drink it, it flows through me and then it goes again. I don't keep water. Well, I have got a little water tank, but you know, I have a little bank account, a little water tank. Um, You know, but it's, it's the same thing. To me, I just see it completely as energy. And since I started doing that, everything changed <laughs> and yeah because yeah. it's where the blocks are you know if, if you're if it's flowing then there's no blocks right but when you when you have a block in that flow um it's like the water isn't it things go stagnant so um okay. and the same with emotional energy of course when there's a block well, in emotional energy things go stagnant inside of us well and that's often a good you know indicator right when it comes to money is when you think about money, is there an emotional reaction in your body? And, you know, nine times out of 10, especially, I I find it especially with um, people that are drawn to the healing world. And I think it's because we have that kind of thought process of, you know, I'm not in it for the money. And we, none of us are, right? (laughs) None of us are in it for the money. We we just can't not do it, right? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And so, um, yeah, I, I love watching when you can help someone move past those blocks because they're like, you don't have to worry about it then, right? It just is something that's just looked after. It just gets done. It goes hand in hand with just trusting because we are the creators of our own reality. So we have to trust ourselves um, or trust the universe, however you want to word it. Just trust that, you know, we are the ones creating our reality and we're creating it for our own benefit. So why why would there be a problem? Why are we creating a problem? No, just create whatever you want. I mean, I think it's just the old paradigm of the word business, you know, because there are so many people that, um, you know, run themselves ragged for their business, you know, and they make their, their, their only objective is to make money and they're not living in health and happiness and they're not in love and they're, you know, um, and that kind of, you know, if your business is making a shed load of money, you're considered to be a success regardless of your health and happiness, you know. Um, so that's kind of what we're changing now, isn't it? It's like, even if we, like, if we didn't need the money, I often ask people, if you had 17 million of whatever currency you want in the bank, I'm not asking you to spend that. I'm just saying the point is you don't need to um, make money. If you didn't need to make money, how would you spend your days? And I think that's a really important question to ask people because whatever comes out of their mouth is what they need to be doing, basically. Yeah, completely. And But one of the things that I can find is because we have so much conditioning around that, right, that actually sometimes we're scared of the success as well. We're scared. We put kind of correlations in our head between what that means. So... You know, if if my practice, if my business, if my whatever you call it starts to generate too much money, then that means I'm going to have to give up this or I'm going to have to 
uh, it's there's got to be a compromise. So mm. um, that's another thing I love to break down because actually that's rarely the case. I found that in my business, generally, the more I earn, the more freedom I have to focus on the parts of my business I enjoy and I can outsource or, you know, I've got, I've got a couple of fabulous VAs who are amazing and, I love the fact that I'm resourced to do that. And I love the fact yeah. that I can then provide them with an income. And yeah. so doing what they're good at and doing what they yeah, enjoy. Yeah, that's it. And they're brilliant at it. And um, yeah, so I, I love just knocking down those. And you'll get this because you love the belief work, don't you? And I do. Yeah. Yeah. Where those knocking down those dominoes of it doesn't have to be this way. It yeah, can be those any way. Yeah. It can be yeah. any way, <clears throat> any way you choose. Yeah. No, I mean, that's interesting. I love all of that. I do want to go back to some of the things that you said. Because, okay, um, well, no, because they just um, resonated with me. So you talked about the pagan path. Mm. I am quite, I don't know whether we mentioned this before, probably not, but um, about the the land clearing that I did. Did, did mm. we talk about that before? And that there was these... Um, these uh, pagans of pago was the word that came to me uh, these women dancing around the fire and um they come to people when they're having healing sessions and um it's just amazing i mean and then people know about them that have never been to the garden retreat it's just like something's going on and i was thinking about your journey when you were talking about when you had the problem with your leg and everything and it was like you know we're never really going to find solutions and if we just stick to the physical you know, it's, mm. it's when we dive into the non-physical um, underlying causes of things that we actually, you know, um, come alive and start realizing our full potential. Um, and these pagans of Pago are clearly in a non-physical form. Um, and yet people are seeing them and experiencing healing through them right in our tent in the garden. Um, and it it's, um, it's quite humbling, actually, because um, there's a part of me that isn't quite ready for some of the stuff that's coming up, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, I can resonate with it. And when people talk about, oh, these women that helped me, and I said, well, um, did you know them? No, 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 no. And then they described them, and they were exactly like the ones, you know, and I'm like, oh, maybe it was the pagans of Pago. And then they get those truth bumps, you know. Yeah. And, um, and then I'm just like, it, it keeps happening. And it's almost like the divine is just introducing me to something poco poco right because yeah. my human mind will get blown I think if uh, it all comes in too much but um I'm really seeing this um because everything's happening in the now right mm -hmm. so they're they're not from the past they they are us now and I've had people come into the garden and just want to cry because they've been here before we've been here or me and them have been here before in another lifetime um what have you um which is so I do want to hear about your pagan path because you talked about working with the pagan path and what does that mean exactly yeah so it kind of started you know I was I see it as lucky enough I was lucky enough to be brought up in the 90s and so like the alternative um you know, there was alternative shops everywhere, you know, crystal shops here and especially on the Isle of Wight. The Isle of Wight's got a lot of pagan roots of mm. Druidism and, and um, yeah, so there's, there's a lot of kind of uh, spiritual shops and alternative spiritual shops here. But also at that time, there was a lot of things in kind of like the pop culture at that time there was movies around that were about things like wicker and um and i can't even really remember how it started but it, it may have been in like our local crystal shop which i i hung hung out in far too often still do <laughs> it's one of those you can't pass by like i'll 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 pop in and i think i'll just pick up some incense and before i know it <laughs> for you know a new crystal and well that salt lamp looks nice and you know um and I think it was my best friend and I picked up a book in there on um wicker I'm wondering if I still have it I'd probably have it on my bookshelf somewhere I've got loads of books um and what really struck me was like the connection and 
this is mirrored in Ayurveda, which is really interesting, but the connection with the seasons and how they affect us and the different energies that change throughout the year and how they affect our our own energetic resonance and, and how actually if we're not careful that can pull us out of balance and um, if we try and work against it too much or if you know certain times of the year we do have to work against it otherwise it drags us down so that the seasons is something that I've always been a little bit fascinated with even as a child I mean I just I still find it magical right that we have certain times of the year when all the flowers pop open and then like like for me autumn I love autumn and just you know the woods is where I feel most at home and so like walking through um the woods when like the the leaves are falling and they're turning it's it's to me it feels like just natural magic around you um so I began working with like the seasons and understanding that side of things um but also one of the things that Wicca really taught me was the power of intention and you know you can call it spells you can call it magic but I think whatever lens we look at this through even if we look at it from a western psychology lens or you know a spiritual lens in terms of you know where you focus that's where the energy flows it was something that I would see happening and I was just a bit blown away by this just having the intention for something to happen or to come true or and then opportunities would emerge and and so I, I you know we we worked what might be termed spells and I, I, I I'm reluctant to use that word if I'm honest because I think we all do this all the time anyway it's just it's more ritualized in Wicca and you know what I liked the ritual I liked the the um ceremony and again it's one of the other things I love about Ayurveda is there's ritual and there's ceremony and you know it could take me back to that kind of little girl that was fascinated by church on Sunday do you know what I mean the the smell of incense and you know I've got resin incense here that my kids laugh because it's the three kings incense and so it completely smokes out the house <laughs> but and the house will smell like a church afterwards and I love it it just makes yeah it just um that frankincense and the myrrh it just you know they are um they are resins that do heighten our vibration anyway and they heighten our connection that you know they're really working on that crown chakra so for me, I just feel most connected when I'm in that space of ritual and ceremony and intention. Um, and I think there's, it, you know, it's sad that many people in the West, due to things like, and I, I completely get it, don't get me wrong, the decline in religion, we've lost a lot of our ceremony. And, you know, we only have ceremony for the weddings or the funerals or um and I think there's real medicinal benefits in that in having your practices and having your routines and in taking that time to pause reflect find stillness and remember that there's far more to life than just this little ego that's running around trying to do things <laughs> and um and get so sucked into their own self-importance I think that's perhaps something that we can all benefit from more of that um so does that does that help yeah. does that no, it, does. it does because I don't really know much about like pagans I've heard the word and everything and it's coming into my reality now but um my my understanding is um i mean you're using uh, other words but i would use the word celebration as well mm. um because of course the image that i had when i did the the land clearing was women dancing around a fire you know they were dancing and singing and enjoying themselves and getting together and and all of this and um 
when I, um, oh, I'm getting truth bumps now. When I um, did the intention for the garden retreat, I thought, oh, I'll just put a little intention about healing and stuff like that. Um, and uh, as I went to write it, um, and even though I do kind of channel with the cards, um, I rarely do the automatic writing channeling, which a lot of channelers do do. I rarely do that. It doesn't usually happen that way for me. But I was sitting there writing the intention. Um, or I probably was typing it even. Um, and it suddenly came through me and not from me. And um, the, one of the reasons that I know it came through me and not from me was because the word celebration came up. I was going to say something like, um, you know, the intention of the garden retreat is to provide um, healing activities um, to help raise your frequency and expand your level of consciousness. But what came through was um, healing and celebratory activities. Yeah. Um, and that word came through and it kind of really, I was like, oh, really are we are we doing that um and it's funny what you said about the seasons obviously there's a pagan in me and i'm learning about it because um we officially opened on the summer solstice um because we put the tent up in april and then we got overwhelmed in may people just wanting to come clearly there's a past life thing going on um there was yeah. an energy draw and it overwhelmed us so i had to kind of close everything down and get myself sorted and going oh, what's going on <laughs> you know um and then we officially opened on the 21st of june and so we do these lovely events at the winter and summer solstice where we offer james does his sound healing you know and, and i do my card readings and i well at least on the 21st of june i put some yoga in because it is also international yoga day that day um but and we have a uh, liz nagel that comes and does the guided meditations as well but i also felt drawn to celebrating the equinoxes and i don't know much about these things but i just i'm just drawn to do it um so last year we just had a picnic in the garden you know there was no theme or anything it was just a picnic in the garden which was lovely and this year next week of course um um we're doing the picnic in the garden again but um i'm asking people you know if they have a passion hobby or something that they love to share whether it's taster sessions or products that they want to sell um or just chat about it they whatever they do and have flyers or examples or anything like this i don't really know i don't really know what what how it's going to pan out but i just have this passion to this passion to promote people that are passionate because I'm understanding <laughs> what comes through with the messages with the cards is always, um, you know, our future lies in us following our passions. We realize that that's what's taking us forward. And life was never meant to be a struggle. We realize that as well. And I always imagine that these souls or these angels or whatever are looking down thinking, how are we going to get these humans to do what they're meant to be doing and expand into more of who they are so they can raise the consciousness level of humanity? I know we'll just give them these gifts that they just can't help but use. You know, we're going to give them inspirations that they're going to not be able to resist, you know. Um, and then, of course, they did that. And what happened was we got programmed and told, you know, you can't, life's not meant to be a bed of roses. It's like you're meant to go to work all week. And if you're lucky, you can practice whatever it is at the weekend. I mean, even now, you know, uh, people say that. And um, and it's like, no, no, it's not meant to be like that. It's you, you you're you given these inspirations. You're given this, these like you going to your, you know, the Zen meditation and the, you know, Ayurveda you know, not everyone's inspired to do that. And definitely not everyone's inspired to put these two things together. This is also, I think, the biggest key is that we're inspired to do all of these things. And then we go and put them all together in our offerings, which is where we get our beautiful uniqueness from. Um, and that's what I think is lovely. And I just love, um, you know, when I say promoting, I don't mean like in a business marketing way. I just mean, I just love meeting and hearing about and letting other people you know it's not so much about promoting the person that's passionate it's about letting the masses that need to be on the receiving end of this passion you know um find out more um about all these things that are on offer because people will just resonate with the right people at the right time for the right reasons um and that's really become a theme in my life is where 
promoting people with passions. So we're hoping next week's um, autumn equinox um, picnic in the garden will have a lot of passionate people sharing their ideas and stuff. And um, and clearly one of our, our intentions, um, although we didn't know it at the time, is just to bring people together, which is important, isn't it? But okay. um, what I love about this, because this is why I've got the interviews and chats section on my um, channel, um, because... I was really into interviewing people like yourself that are so passionate and so good at what they do and, you know, rocking it for humanity at this time of the Great Awakening. It's just so important, I think. Um, and it was funny because, you know, I'm really into um, astrology, but um, not I don't study it, but I, I know the people to go to. And I had my um, I was looking into my North Node, which is the direction that our soul wants to go in in this lifetime as opposed to the south node which is where we're comfortable so it's all about leaving your comfort zone still yeah. right and um my my north node i found this out after i started doing that series with liz right self-mastery with liz nagel um and, and tapping into her wisdom and then I was wondering why I was so inspired to do it my north node is all about promoting other people and giving other people the limelight because my south node being Sagittarius is um, very me 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 and I can quite relate yeah. to that to be honest there's a lot of me 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 going on um, and now my north node you know where I'm going wants me to to give other people the voice and um and for someone that talks a lot like me, you know, that's kind of interesting. But it's interesting how I was doing it. And then I I looked in the astrology and that's where I'm meant to be going. And it's just beautiful, isn't it, to have all these different channels yeah. whereby um, we get that confirmation. We get that yeah. confirmation that we're on the right track and doing the right thing. Do you find that? Oh, completely. Yeah, it's and I love I I love looking at all of those things. You know, I've. I've had my birth chart read and I, it, funny enough, this morning I I went down the Gene Keys rabbit hole mm. off the back of a podcast and that was really interesting in the respect of it said, um, you know, you know you've moved past the shadow basically when um, you're basically helping the masses but it's not about you and so I thought that that is interesting because that's where the business has got to. It's no longer about me. It's about the people I've trained and showcasing them and showcasing other healers around the world, like with the Healing Business podcast. Um, and it, it's nice because it feels good, right, to, to go to have that validation of, yeah, I know I'm on the right path, but it's nice that someone else is telling me that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly and you only have to follow your heart to be on the right path don't you but what I love about what you're saying um and this is a phrase that the lovely Liz gave me and I'm really seeing it um is like the leadership role because we're coming from a paradigm whereby our leaders haven't been um leading with the highest intention of all um and what kind of leaders do we want going forward um and I've never viewed myself as a leader before and um and Liz was going well yes you are and I was like where where am I a leader I, mean, I might be a teacher you know on some level but not so much a leader and then she said you lead from behind and then I was like oh see now I've got truth bumps really yeah. because you know uh, leading from behind is exactly promoting people letting people see the the passion within themselves letting people see the power within themselves letting people see the energy within themselves so that they can go and do what they're doing and that's exactly what you're doing right mm -hmm. it's exactly what you're doing so it's like you know this is the this is what leadership looks like in the new paradigm it's basically everyone just following their heart but helping other people bring out the most in them because of course everyone's a reflection of us so um when we that's why i love doing what i do because when i help other people on their path then it's helping me on mine because that's my purpose so i help other people find their purpose then that is my purpose so you've just got a win-win situation going on haven't you um and everyone is a reflection of a part of us. So it just means that we're expanding and expanding and expanding into more of who we really are. That's how I see it. I think that's a beautiful way of explaining it. No, it's so true. And I I don't know about you, but um, 
one of the things that I had to work through initially in in starting, you know, the Medicine Woman Collective was I almost had this sense of guilt that, you know, people are paying me and I get to do what I love all day, every day. It always felt like this feels a little bit indulgent. Like, and I remember talking to my then coach about it saying, I've got this weird sense of like, it's all a bit too amazing actually. Yeah. But you know, that's when you know, like, and I love your analogy of just follow the joy. And I, I agree. I, I always say to, you know, the clients I work with, just follow the breadcrumbs. And then those little breadcrumbs before you know it, you're, you're like, you look back and you go, Oh, wow. It all makes sense now. But at the time, it's like this breadcrumb makes no sense in the context of everything else going on in my life. Um, I, I remember reading an interesting story from Sahara Rose. Do you know Sahara Rose? I heard of her now. Oh, she does a lot of work around Dharma and purpose. And, and she was telling this story about, you know, she she had her business and she was, you know, doing really well in that. And and she just felt cool to go learn to DJ. And she, like it made no sense in the context of her life. But she did it. And now she incorporates it into like her retreats where she has like these like ecstatic dance DJ sets. And, and I just thought, I love that. That when we follow those little nuggets of inspiration and, oh, that feels true for me right now, then it all just makes sense in the end and you just have to trust that process. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, definitely. I mean, I think that's the same with a lot of things. I mean, when you say breadcrumbs, I would use the word like baby steps, you mm. know, just take a little baby step, just open the door, just yeah. open the door. That's all we need to do is open the door. And funny enough, that's the messages from this week, which was um, open the floodgates of the divine, because when you open the door, the right door, you know, um, and you just take those breadcrumbs, those baby steps, whatever it is, the energy is going in the right direction. And as soon as the energy, as soon as water finds a way, that's yeah. the floodgates of the divine. It, and it will come through you. It's not from you. So that's yeah. humbling. That's where I get the humbling bit, you know, and this is very much when we're operating from the heart chakra and above, as opposed to the solar plexus of look what I achieved. I did all of this, you know, which is great. And, you know, it's, it's important to have that feeling as a, in our human experience. But when you expand into the heart chakra, you know, we're really, you know, understanding that, um, it's the life is flowing through us. The divine is flowing through us. And we are literally that vessel, you know, that, that people talk about. Um, and you, and because it's flowing through us, you, you as a human, if you're identifying as your human still, you as a human really don't need to do anything. You just need to allow, just need to allow it to, to flow through. I think that's, um, that's wonderful. really interesting. Yeah, yeah. I love that. And it's funny, it reminds me of um, one of the Zen masters I used to work with. He, he, I can remember I was just at the beginning of like starting to offer out treatments and things. And I was had this hesitancy and, you know, am I getting into my ego about this? Is this all about me? Is it about, you know, wanting to prove myself or something? Like I was trying to contemplate and make sure that it was coming from the right energy, coming from the right place. And I, and I remember him saying, the thing is, when you're on this path of, you know, healing, spirituality, when you, you know, most of us enter into it initially just for interest or because we want to help ourselves, we can see that wounded part of ourselves. Um, but he was saying, you get to a certain point where it's just not even a question anymore. Of course, you want to help other people mm. because your heart's so open and um and it makes me really emotional saying that but your heart is so open you can't bear the thought of other people suffering so oof wave of emotion <laughs> there. um truth bomb. So, and i think we have to trust that right we have to trust definitely that mm. definitely 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 um completely um and that's 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 where we're at really isn't it now yeah. it's just letting it all flow and and you know, having gone from not thinking as being a negative thing, oh, you just don't think, 
going into thinking right a lot which is great and you know it's all part of the course into oh let's not think anymore we don't need to think we're all that's the fourth dimensional you know mental body um if you're letting the divine flow through you it's coming from a much higher source than your fourth dimensional mind just use your fourth dimensional mind to carry out whatever inspirations are coming through um as opposed to operating from that level so yeah. really um stop thinking is because a lot of my work has been as you said about the beliefs so we'll 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 kind of install a positive belief to counterbalance a negative one you know obviously i love and accept myself and i trust myself and all of this and we can raise people's frequency to align with the frequency of those beliefs and those affirmations or what have you um but actually you then get to a level whereby having no thoughts and um and even no opinions again yeah. you know we were brought up i was brought up you know six form debating society where you're meant to discuss stuff and um you know you're you're considered quite ignorant if you don't have an opinion on everything and especially in today's world people want us to have an opinion on everything and it's just like i can't be bothered <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree. It's one of the things that I saw change in me quickly was um, I used to be very opinionated about many yeah. different things. Yeah. And me too. I could just feel my attachment to those things just gently, gently go. I was, and I realized I didn't care. Yeah. And I also accepted a lot more readily. There's some things we just don't know. And that's okay. And yeah. I love that, that, um, especially in the world of spirituality i love the fact that i can practice buddhism i can you know i can i also you know i also do a lot in terms of like shamanic work and i love the fact that i don't know i don't know if it works i don't know if yeah. it's true yeah. I, and i don't need to but i know the benefits i see and that's enough yeah so i yeah it, yeah and it's yeah it's a bit like the inspiration i have for next week's you know gathering i i literally put on the post it's like um i don't know how it's gonna go um there are no guarantees <laughs> you yeah. know it's like but i'm just following my inspiration i'm just putting it out there and it doesn't matter it's like it, yeah if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't because one of my favorite uh, realizations is also that actually nothing matters yeah actually nothing matters because i'm the creator and i'm creating it all and so if i create something that kind of like supposedly doesn't work out i'm like i'll take whatever benefits and it doesn't matter well, who, what does it matter who does it matter to because there is only me and it was an experience and a learning one and i did what came to me and what have you but when you let go of all of the those expectations and you let go of all of that control and you let go of that need to know everything um that's when the divine is really flowing and then things are miraculous i mean that's where we do see the miracles and the you know the successes if that's the right word for for creating creating let's say um enjoyable abundant experiences <laughs> uh, yeah. wow we spoke we've spoken for nearly an hour already um but i do want to ask you um so can you tell us a bit more about um, the coaching in the um, the Medicine Women's Collective in case anybody um, listening to this is interested and wants to work with you on um, a deeper level? Yeah, so, um, so we have the qualified training so you can train to be a coach of Ayurveda, which is, um, which is a 12 month course. It's um, we go into the history of Ayurveda, the spirituality of Ayurveda, but also the really practical things. So, you know, food, herbs, exercise, relationships, times of year, times of life, these all have an energy pattern to them. And we get to work with those in harmony with those as opposed to in resistance to those or, you know, this is what made me ill, was doing, being conditioned what was healthy from a Western lens, when what Ayurveda teaches us is there is no one size fits all. There is, you know, we all have our own unique energetic pattern, which will mean certain things will nourish us more than others. Mm -hmm. And our body needs certain things at certain times of the year and certain practices at certain times of the year. And when we get to work in harmony with that, we have our vitality. 
which as well as the spiritual element of Ayurveda, which, you know, I could talk about all day and, uh, you know, we'll go down a rabbit hole with that. <laughs> so um, I, we have that, which like say a 12 month program, you find out more on the website, which is the medicine woman collective.com. Which so um, I'll put a link in the description. Fabulous. And um, yeah, there's free gifts and all sorts on the website. So you can go have a look. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, was a big passion project of mine because I knew, you know, I'd worked a lot with, I'd, I kind of did it backwards, right? I kind of worked, you know, I jumped around a bit. I worked with the mind, then that led to energy. And then I came back to the physical body, which is like an interesting way to do it. I say that Ayurveda incorporates everything. Um, but I realized that some of those fundamental pieces in terms of my physical health were missing because um, I didn't know how to look after it. Didn't know how to look after my body. I thought it meant running and eating salads. And I look back now and, you know, have a lot of compassion for that Holly that was trying to look after herself. Um, but she didn't know anything else. She didn't know anything yeah. better. So um, bless her, she was, she was making it all worse. <laughs> But, you know, now, now I get to not only just use food as medicine, which I love, I mean, I, I love food. So the fact it gets to be my medicine is brilliant. Um, but also we go into the energetics of plants and how you can use herbs. And, and as you know, that is a, another big part of my passion is, you know, how we can use plants as medicine and um, something I've always had there in the back of my my mind I think it started from being a young child making like lavender pillows for my grandma and her telling me you know they help you relax and you can sleep and I can remember thinking wow that's magic to me like <laughs> that felt like magic what you take this plant and it can help you sleep I was like wow um and so yeah now I spend a lot of time working with different plants and in a variety of different ways um yeah and that's and why i think you thrive so well and and you you're so radiant with alignment i want to say um mm -hmm. i think that's yeah well you're you're one of these people whose beauty is clearly coming from that alignment that you have with your soul and we did talk briefly didn't we before about your soul profile um clearly dominant in second with the relationship between not only the plants but the seasons nature mm -hmm. that's a very second energy center thing and then your other dominant ones, of course, are the fourth, which is the divine love and healing, which clearly you are. You're holding space for people. You're bringing the love and the healing into the plants and everything that you do. But also dominant in fifth, which is the divine self-expression, which is the teachers. The teachers. I mean, yes, we can talk because we can carry on for ages. Can't we? Yeah. <laughs> but it's that teaching that 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 finding it easy to create a course and um have people come and then that desire to just pass on that information that's served you um onto onto others that's very much the 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 teacher um that's very much the fifth energy center and it's it's very much connected to divine self-expression as mm. opposed to human self-expression which can come from a place like uh, like the pain body or the, the limiting beliefs you know we're not talking about expressing all of that we're talking about divine self-expression um which is when you allow the divine to flow through you which clearly you are doing lovely holly hmm. thank but, you lovely it's oh. lovely to hear like your take in terms of because it completely resonates with my paths and i love the yeah. fact that we're all you know, I used this analogy last time that we're all traveling up the same mountain, right? But we're just taking these slightly different paths and sometimes our paths overlap and sometimes they don't. And, but I love seeing the reflections and the similarities in the different paths, despite the fact that we often, you know, we'd like to believe that all our paths are very different, but I don't know about you, but the more I learn about religion and spirituality the more i just think wow there's so much overlap in all of these right and um yeah so it's beautiful to hear your reflection yeah but also when you talk about the overlap i mean it's you know if you if you take i think the the key is quantum quantum man you know 
Mm. manifestation or quantum physics i call it quantum truth bombs i'm not a quantum physicist of course <laughs> um but i think that's where understanding the quantum world and the quantum field i think because if you keep going along um you know a religion a religious path or a spiritual path you know you're going to get to quantum physics and if yeah. you keep going along the scientific path and you keep going, you're going to get to quantum physics. So um, I I see them actually born, all born out of the same thing. Well, we are. We're all born out of that quantum field, aren't we? So, mm -hmm. um, but again, it's it's all these different perceptions, and I think it's beautiful because it serves people. There's going to be people that resonate with the words that you you know that have come through you. Um, just little things like you know you talk about the lens, you know. Mm -hmm. as a per I would say point of view it's the same thing but I love the way that you've you know that you the phrases that you've coined already you know to to express yourself and to explain yourself that's also very much a fifth energy center thing to do um is to create that beautiful flow of expression um so hopefully people are going to you know resonate and um yeah and if you uh, anyone listening if you do want to get in touch check out the link in the description below um I know we could go on forever but we'll have another interview at another time when we've got uh, <laughs> other things to talk about as well, because we've covered an awful lot, haven't we, um, today? Thank you so much for having me. I've really enjoyed it. Oh, thank you for you. connecting again. It's just so wonderful and so so beautiful to connect with you. But is there anything you want to say or share before we say goodbye? I don't think so. Just, you know, lovely to chat with you. Hello to everyone in your audience. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. If you want to know about anything, Anything that I mentioned, you want to know more about it, get in touch. We can have a chat. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank lots you. Of, lots of gratitude and honoring and, and mutual appreciation going on here. So uh, that's it for this interview. And I look forward to seeing you all again in the next one. So lots of love to Polly and to anyone listening. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Now I've got to find the, the, the stop button. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.